it doesn't matter what the freaking legal and ethics people say. We're, we need to win this motherfucker. Hillary like is aware of all the work that you guys do. I hope. The campaign is fully in. And then they tell Hillary like what's going on. Well, I mean Hillary knows who Jenny is. Yeah. I'm not suggesting we wait around. We need to start this shit right away. Okay. On every one of these trucks. Okay. What I call this conflict engagement. Mm -hmm. That's that's your that's your version of reenfranchisement. Conflict engagement in in the lines at Trump rallies. No. We're starting anarchy here. This is part one of our undercover investigation into the dark backroom dealings of the Hillary Clinton presidential campaign. The culmination of a year-long investigation infiltrating the machine from the bottom all the way to the White House. There are concerns this election will be rigged. What you're about to see will make you uncomfortable and angry. It's graphic, uncensored, and disturbing. Our attorneys say there is strong evidence of criminality. And this is just part one. A lot of reunion guys built forever. Oh, yeah. You want. Yeah. They're rock and roll. So I'm basically deputy rapid response director for the DNC for all things Trump oh. on the ground. Nobody's really supposed to know about me. <laughs> no, I'm saying we have mentally ill people mm. that we pay to do shit. Make no mistake. This guy named Cesar Vargas. Is his name? I got a priest to cry on camera once. You know, Brad and Bob and Lux and myself are all part of the old school method where it doesn't matter what the freaking legal and ethics people say. We're, we need to win this motherfucker. Um, so Bob is really good friends with him mm -hmm. and talked to him this afternoon. And they are all in. If we can get 25 grand, they're all in. There is a narrative that supporters at Trump rallies are violent and dangerous, looking to beat up protesters who don't agree with them. But our undercover investigation into the Hillary Clinton Democratic Party machine reveals a very different story. If you're there and you're protesting and you do these actions, mm -hmm. you will be attacked at Trump rallies. That's what we want. Oh, so, oh, oh, so that's part of the process that's, of, get, of the eliciting the reaction. The whole point okay. of it is we know that Trump's people will, will freak the fuck out, his security team will freak out, and his supporters will lose their shit. This is Scott Fovel. He is the National Field Director for Americans United for Change. He used to work for People for the American Way, an organization funded by George Soros. He also has his own company called the Foval Group. He is one of the dark operatives for the Clinton campaign. We were contracted directly with the DNC and the campaign, both. Yeah. I am contracted to him, mm -hmm. but my, I answer to the head of special events for the DNC mm -hmm. and the head of the special events and political for the campaign. The campaign pays DNC, DNC pays Democracy Partners, Democracy Partners pays the Fogel Group, the Fogel Group goes and executes the shit on the ground. Democracy Partners is a private political consulting company with deep ties to Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama's White House, and the Democratic National Committee. We are the primary mechanism as a team. Democracy Partners is the, the tip of the spear up. Wherever Trump and Pence are gonna be, we have a bench. Okay. And we have a whole team across the country that does that. Both consultants and people from the Democratic Party and the Democratic Party apparatus and people from the uh, campaign, the Clinton campaign. Um, and uh, you know, my role with the campaign is to manage all that. Bob Creamer is Democracy Partners. He is the husband of Jan Schakowsky, a Democratic congresswoman from Chicago, and in 2005, he pled guilty to tax violations and bank fraud. He was convicted and sentenced to five months in prison and 11 months of house arrest. He founded Democracy Partners in 2011. Just for a little orientation, um, Democracy Partners is kind of a group practice of a variety of consultants that um, do essentially a wide variety of different kinds of political consulting. I work with Bob Kramer one to one all the time. I'm the white hat. Democracy Partners is kind of the dark hat. Bob Kramer is diabolical. And I love him for it. Yeah. This investigation has revealed compelling evidence of a dark money conspiracy, a violation of federal campaign coordination laws between Hillary Clinton's campaign, Priorities USA, Hillary's Super PAC, 
and the Democratic National Committee. We have a quick deliverable that we have to deliver every day uh -huh. for our groups of clients who are involved in these projects. AUFC, uh, A A4C, which is Alliance for uh, Change, um, Alliance for Retired Americans, which is part of AFL-CIO. Mm -hmm. They're one of our partners on, on the AUFC stuff and for social security. Depends on the issue. And then there's, there's the DNC and the campaigns mm -hmm. and priorities. Priorities is a big part of this too. The campaigns and DNC cannot coordinate with priorities, mm -hmm. but I guarantee to you that the people who run the super PACs all talk to each other and we and a few other people are the hubs of that communication. Like, so you're kind of like um, intermediaries between the super PACs and the DNC. But they can, the DNC, they can't talk to each other. Okay. But you guys are kind of like... We're consultants, so we're not the official entity. Mm -hmm. And so those conversations can be had between consultants who are working for different parts. Yeah. Okay. That's why, there's, that's why there's Bob, who's the primary there, and I'm a sub to him, mm -hmm. and I'm also primary to AUFC separately. That's why. So there's like a Morse code between the DNC and the Super PACs. It's, and it's you guys less are... of a Morse code than it is a... A text, a text conversation that never ends. It's like that. Uh -huh. It's kind of, it's kind of like, it's kind of like um, an ongoing Pony Express. Okay, so I mean, if that's it's not as efficient as it could be. But that's because the, the law doesn't allow it. The thing that we have to watch is making sure there's a double blind between the actual campaign and the actual DNC and what we're doing. There's a double blind there. No, so that they can plausibly deny that they didn't do anything about it. Scott Fovel is Kramer's attack dog. Fovel and his people train the agitators to go to Trump rallies, and nothing is left to chance. There's a script. Oh, there is a script. There's a script. Okay. There's a script of engagement. Sometimes the crazies bite, and sometimes the crazies don't bite. They're starting confrontations in the line, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? They're not starting confrontations to volunteers. in the rally, because once they're inside the rally, they're under Secret Service's control. When they're outside the rally... Mm -hmm. They're more affected out. They're harder to get in. The media will cover it no matter where it happens. I assume it's always in the rally. initiating the conflict by having leading conversations with people who are naturally psychotic. Right. Okay, I mean, honestly, it is not hard to get some of these assholes to pop off. Right. It's, it's a matter of showing up to want to get into the rally in a Planned Parenthood t-shirt. Right. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, uh, Trump is a Nazi, you know, you can, you can message to draw them out mm -hmm. and draw them to punch you. Fovel boasts about the extent of his network of operatives. So here, you have a schedule of events. Mm -hmm. We update this on an ongoing, rolling basis every morning. Mm -hmm. Those are all okay. the Trump appearances. These are all the Trump oh, wow. and Pence appearances. Tomorrow, for instance, we are turning out 500 people in front of the Trump International in D.C. We have to have people prepared to go wherever these events are, which means we have to have a central kind of agitator training. Yep. Now, we have a built-in group of people in New York who do this. Okay. We have a built-in group of people in D.C. who do this. I was going to say, are they, are they localized? We have a group of people in Vegas. We have a group of people okay. in Colorado. We have a group of people in Minneapolis. So I'm basically deputy rapid response director for the DNC for all things Trump on the ground. This guy is Aaron Black. He works full-time for Creamer at Democracy Partners. He directs the spontaneous protests at Trump and Pence events. His real name is actually Aaron Minter. We don't know why he uses the name Black. Nobody's really supposed to know about me. <laughs> so the Chicago protest, when they shut all that, that was us. It was more him than me, but none of okay. this is supposed to come back to us because we want it coming from people. We don't want it to come from the party. So if we do a protest and it's brown oh, DNC protest, it's right away the press going to say partisan. But if I'm in there coordinating with all the groups on the ground and 
sort of playing field general, but they're the ones talking to the cameras. It, it, then it's actually people. But if we send out press advisories with DNC on them and and Clinton campaign, it just it doesn't have the same effect. We have to be really careful um, because so <laughs> because what we don't need is for it to show up on CNN that the DNC paid for X people to. That's not going to happen. So me and I did the Chicago Trump event where we shut down the light bulbs. Yeah. Zulema Rodriguez and Aaron Black are bragging about a protest last March that turned extremely violent and led the Trump campaign to cancel a huge rally. Fights broke out between protesters and Trump supporters, and two Chicago police officers were injured. Based on our reporting, the event was not spontaneous. We have a call with the campaign every day to go over the focuses that need to be undertaken. I just had a call with the campaign and the DNC. We met her at the Republican convention in Cleveland in July. And then, um, and then we also did the Arizona one where we shut the highway down. Yeah, really? Yeah. This Clinton dark machine is also prepared for the fallout from the violence they foment at the Trump rallies and other demonstrations. Because the one thing I'm never going to do is have some kid get punched out at a rally and then not have his doctor bill and his legal bill, if he gets arrested, pay for it. Ultimately, the whole endeavor is to get negative press of Trump and his supporters in local and national media. It's something that Bob and I obsess about, is we're not going to go to an effort to just do an event and not have anybody show up or not have it covered. We have to get coverage. These guys have been doing their dirty tricks for some time, even before Trump won the nomination. So I, I probably know your work. I know yeah. you do. Yeah. Everybody knows. But was the, um, you mean like a situation where it's sort of like a... Remember the um, Iowa State Fair thing where Scott Walker grabbed the um, sign out of the dude's hand? Uh -huh. And then the dude gets kind of roughed up right in front of the stage, right? Yeah. On camera? Yeah. That was all us. The guy who got roughed up, up yeah. is, is my counterpart who works for Bob. And that, and, and that was like, like a storyboarded that him getting roughed up or whatever? Or yeah. scenario. Uh-huh. And it, and you, so you like lent yourselves to that situation and it happened. It was a self-fulfilling prophecy. We planted multiple people in that front area around him and in the back to make sure there wasn't just a action that happened up front. There was also a reaction that happened out back. Remember this woman? Her name is Shirley Teeter. She is a 69-year-old sufferer of COPD. According to numerous news stories at the time, she was assaulted at a Trump rally in North Carolina by Trump supporter Richard Campbell. The media played her story across the country for days. She was one of our activists. She was one of your activists who, who, had, been, who had been trained up to bird dog. Yes. So the term bird dogging, you put people in the line mm -hmm. at the front, which means they have to get there at 6 o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. so they're getting the front mm -hmm. of the rally so that when Trump comes down the rope line, they're the ones asking him the question in front of the reporters mm -hmm. because they're pre-placed there. To funnel that kind of operation, you have to start back with people two weeks ahead of time and train them how to ask questions. Right. We have to train them to bird dog. You no, know I'm saying we have mentally ill people mm. that we pay to do shit. Make no mistake. Over the last 20 years, I have paid off a few homeless guys to do some crazy stuff, and I've also taken them for dinner, and I've also made uh -huh. sure they had a hotel and a, and a shower, and I put them in a program. Mm -hmm. Like I've done that, but the the reality is a lot of, in, especially in in our union guys. A lot of for union guys, they'll do whatever oh, yeah. you want. Yeah. They're rock and roll. Level when up. I need to get something done in Arkansas, mm -hmm. right. the first guy I call is the head of the AFL-CIO down there, uh -huh. because he will say, what do you need? And I will say, I need a guy who will do this and this, and they find that guy. And that guy will be like, yeah, hell, let's do it. Bird dogging. Bird dogging. It's a word we had not heard until we got into this investigation. But when we checked the WikiLeaks Clinton emails, we found references to the term in emails to and from the campaign. 
This is a chain where Clinton campaign manager Robbie Mook suggests it might be a tactic to employ to shore up support with Hispanic voters. After our report, they may also need some help with the people in Iowa and Wisconsin. So I, I have to be really honest. Iowa is a difficult case because it's a 50-50 state, and honestly, half the state is racist as fuck. Mm. I, I came home last night and really just, I was upset because that's not the way I was raised, and that's not the Iowa that I grew up in, but you kind of have to accept that that's the way it is now. It's not who you are, but that's what the state is. Right. Wisconsin is just as bad. Okay. I'm Hillary Clinton, and I approve this message. Corruption. As you can see, it's alive and well in our country, and you're paying for it. As we continue to release more videos, you must hold the mainstream media to account to further investigate what we've uncovered. America, our war is here. We must decide if we're going to save this country or lose it. To quote Abraham Lincoln, America will never be destroyed from the outside. If we falter or lose our freedoms, it will be because we destroyed ourselves.